After a busy weekend, another threat for dangerous, severe thunderstorms in parts of North Texas and Texoma today that could include the threat of tornadoes. Let's talk about it in this Monday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. Hey, good morning. It's Monday, the 19th of May, 2025. I'm Texas Storm Chaser Spalty and Chief David Reimer. We had live tornado coverage for about five hours yesterday as storms tracked from the big country across western North Texas into the DFW Metroplex and then some with that storm that moved across Den and Collin counties, the storm that wasn't supposed to be and yet managed to be. That was a pain in the behind, but I hope everyone made it through it okay yesterday. I know we've had some damage, unfortunately. Uh, and we do hope folks will be able to get that cleaned up, and we hope we didn't have any significant injuries. Definitely not, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's just a matter of what we have to deal with here in the springtime here in the state of Texas and sometimes other times of the year, but we do our best to keep folks safe, and that's always our main goal. Uh, let's just get into it. We are going to face the potential for severe storms again today. Now, this is not a guarantee. This is not a complete slam dunk. In fact, even though we had some pretty high risk levels on the map today, we have some pretty bright colors, this is not something where I'm going to sit here and tell you for sure we're going to have tornadoes in Texas today. In fact, it's possible we may not even have too many severe storms in Texas today. The higher threat of severe storms and tornadoes definitely across Oklahoma and parts of Kansas but there are a lot of questions we need to answer, and to be perfectly honest with you, we don't have a lot of great answers right now. Weather models have not done well in the last couple of weeks, and they sure have not done well this past week, which greatly reduces the forecast confidence and my confidence in being able to give you a one tell-all time forecast. That being said, if we have storms this afternoon and evening in North Texas or Texoma, there is a significant risk they will be tornadic with the potential of tornadoes. Very large hail up to the size of softballs and wind gusts potentially up to 80 miles an hour. Not all that different than what we dealt with yesterday. Just a question of how many storms are we going to have, when and where are they going to develop, and where are they going to eventually move. We do note the potential is certainly up there. The Storm Prediction Center does have a level 4 out of 5 risk in effect, uh, with level 5 being the highest up along the Red River from... Uh, that includes places like uh, Henrietta, Gainesville, Sherman, over towards Bonham, up in Oklahoma. Uh, that's a nearly one in two chance you're going to have severe storms in your neck of the woods with it this afternoon. Uh, level three risk, same we had yesterday. North Texas, northwest Texas, Wichita Falls, down to Breckenridge, Menor Wells, east through the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, up towards Greenville, Mount Pleasant, Mount... Uh, Vernon up to just west of Texarkana and then a level two risk extending down into parts of central Texas and a level one risk surrounding that with the overall probability of severe storms lower in the lower risk levels that being said today's less of a what risk level are you in and more of a where are we going to have storms because the hazards would be similar in any of the risk zones uh, we could have a storm say in Colleen producing the same severe weather as a storm up in, you know, Sherman. It's just a matter of where are the storms going to be and where are we going to see the most of them. Any storm in any risk level today could produce up to softball size hail, damaging winds, and a tornado threat. The risk of tornadoes is certainly there today, just like it was yesterday. It's a bit higher today if we have storms. Now, I wish I could sit here, show you the fancy graphics I typically would, and be like, all right, this is what we're looking at. I'm not. I can't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you three different weather models, three different convective allowing models, and I'm going to show you the differences in what we're looking at today. And then I'm going to talk you through why they're showing what they're showing. Now, the high-res rapid refresh model, the six Zulu run, fires off an initial round of storms. Oklahoma, I-35 in the eastern Oklahoma, down to the Red River, almost to Sherman, about 2 to 3 p.m. Storms like that, yeah, they could get going quickly. Large hail, damaging winds, and a few tornadoes. Doesn't fire anything off south of Highway 82 through mid-afternoon, outside of a few showers. As we get into the 5 to 7 p.m. time frame, you can see it fires up a real gnarly supercell. 
near Decatur in Wise County, moves it up towards Sherman by 6 p.m. into Oklahoma by 7 p.m. If that were to verify, that storm would likely be tornadic, producing tornadoes, giant hail, and damaging winds. Storms will be moving northeast today at 50 to 60 miles an hour. They're going to be fast movers. Notice, DFW, Central Texas, not a thing. Yeah, this model has nothing. Now, I'm not saying that's right. I have no, I, I don't have high confidence in any of these have exactly when and where storms are going to be. I'm just showing you to give you an idea. Now, we'll let this restart, but this is the North American model. This is typically one of the models that is overzealous with storm numbers. It can show a lot of storms. You could see a couple showers, 10 a.m. through early afternoon. It fires off a few storms uh, by 2 to 3 p.m. Way out near Wichita Falls, down to Mineral Wells on the dry line, fires up more storms, 6 to 7 p.m. in Mineral Wells, Parker County, moves them through DFW, up and towards Paris. Even more storms after that. And then eastern North Texas, you can see a lot of those storms are kind of clustered in a line. If this were to verify, this would be a busier scenario for North Texas Tech, somewhere with the potential of large hail, damaging winds, and probably some tornado threat with the most intense storms. And again, this would nail the Metroplex up into, you know, Paris, northeast Texas this evening. We'd have damaging winds, hail, tornado threat. Okay? Here is a experimental model, the high-res wharf. Uh, this is actually a model that was in development a few years ago. It too was overzealous with thunderstorm numbers, and I believe they're actually taking this back to the drawing board to fix some of the errors they found in it. But... Uh, I guess I'll let it play and then I'll start it over. This starts, these are all start at 10 a.m. Central and run through about midnight tonight. So here is 10 a.m., 11, 12, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., and midnight. And I say all that now so I can verbally describe what you're seeing. It fires up scattered severe storms all the way from central Oklahoma through Texoma, North Texas, and into central Texas in the Brazos Valley. Most intense storms, again, could be real large hail, damaging winds, and a tornado threat. And those storms would be moving northeast at 40 to 50 to 60 miles an hour. They'd be moving quickly. So, why did I just show you three different models and talk you through it? That's simply me showing you the forecast uncertainty in what we're dealing with today and that this is not a slam dunk and that believe it or not we are not as good as we think we are especially with model accuracy in the dumpster over the last couple weeks so what we're gonna have to do is almost like we did you know 15 20 years ago we're gonna have to throw a lot of these super fancy convective allowing models out and we're simply just going to have to look out the window. You know, at about 7 a.m. this morning, all the weather service offices, at least several across the country, not all of them, but several, launch upper air weather radio signs, weather balloons. That data goes into weather models, but it also allows us to see where we have specific jet stream features. Once the sun rises, we'll be able to look at satellite. We'll be able to see where outflow boundaries are left over from storms yesterday, where those are this afternoon are going to play roles in where we could see storms develop this afternoon in addition to east of the dry line we'll see some towering cumulus on those by early afternoon are we going to have scattered showers and storms this morning if we do they may have some hail and gusty winds not too much of a tornado threat with those but they could play a role in what happens this afternoon if those storms develop are those going to be the main round leading to not much this afternoon evening like or vice versa is the whole dry line going to fire off and are we going to have, you know, a really busy day from North Texas up to Oklahoma, Kansas? That's on. Sorry, the sinus cough thing's kicking in. That's around on the that's the that is something on the possibility scale. And one reason why we have such a high end severe weather outlook, out. because if storms go like that, the ingredients are in place. We have very strong low level wind shear. The atmosphere is extremely unstable. In case you haven't noticed and stepped outside, it feels like you're in the Gulf. A lot of moisture. That's jet fuel to storms. A lot of wind shear. That helps ventilate the storms, push the rain outside of the updraft region, allowing them to continually suck in that warm, unstable jet fuel-like air. And then with the wind shear and the low levels reaching up into the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere, that allows them to rotate. And then eventually, 
you know, you get your severe weather, your big, big hail, your nasty winds, and with that real strong low-level wind shear, a lot of moisture keeping cloud bases lower, and a large amount of instability in the low levels to allow for vorticity, the stretching of that low-level uh, area of rotation, the tornado threat. So, yeah, the high-end scale today, yeah, we've got a pretty high-end potential for severe weather if everything can come into play. And guess what? I can't tell you for sure that's going to happen. I would not be completely shocked if I'm back here in 24 hours recording this video telling you, hey, you know what? We didn't have much happen. I'm really happy about that. Here's why. Or I could be sitting here after doing six to eight hours of tornado coverage and we're having to pick up the pieces. It's really going to be that kind of day. So that's all for me to tell you from really 1 p.m. through 11 p.m. We need to be aware. Now, if we don't have storms underway by 8 p.m., that's going to be a telling tale. And we're going to be able to really start toning this down. But, you know, we're really just going to need to remain weather aware. If you're in Texoma, North Texas, even Central Texas, all right, pay attention today. And understand, I'm not saying we are for sure going to have a big issue today, but uh, the ingredients are in place. It's just a matter of, are we going to have that little powder keg light off or not? Time's going to tell, but this could be anywhere from a day with a few storms with hail, wind, to a day where we've got long track tornadoes causing major, major problems. So, you know... That's as honest as I can be. I realize that's not the forecast many of you want to hear. You want to know, is it going to rain in the backyard at 5.04 p.m.? Hey, I wish I could tell you that. I really wish I could, but I can't. And guess what? Anyone else who says they can, uh, well, see if they'll sell you a bridge. They might. So, let's take a look. What happens after today? Here's the upper-level jet stream. Now, this will restart in a second. You're going to see that upper-level storm system overhead today, ejecting out tomorrow, pushing the threat of severe storms east of Texas by tomorrow. After tomorrow, we're going to have a cold front come on in, bring a much cooler, drier air mass into at least the northwestern two-thirds of Texas tonight into tomorrow, and then we'll warm back up for mid to late week. But we're not looking at a really particularly active pattern. That jet stream will really be off to our north. Could have another cool front try to push in towards the late weekend, but take note, we don't really have a lot in the way of jet stream activity here in Texas until, you know, maybe early next week. So in terms of a active period, today's going to be the last day, and then we're done for a while. Uh, so that's the good news. All right. So there's the latest forecast. I wish I could have better news. I wish I could be specific, but it is what it is. Hate me if you want. I don't really care. I'm going to sleep perfectly fine. But... It is what it is. We'll do our best to keep you updated. We will have live severe weather coverage on our website, our mobile app, the YouTube channels, Facebook, X, and Twitch when we have tornado warnings today, if we have tornado warnings, but we probably will. And you know what? Just like yesterday, we're going to do our best to keep you updated with the latest weather information focusing solely on Texas because that's our name. That's what we do. And that's what we're going to be here to do. Keep y'all in Texas up to date. We're going to have plenty of tornadoes in Oklahoma and Kansas, but it's not our problem. We're going to deal with Texas. So make sure you tune in for that Texas severe weather coverage. All right. My voice is gone. Adios. Omazwa. I'm going to get this up and y'all have a good morning. We'll chat with you later. Adios. God bless.